Now, one of the most impressive releases of 2022 came from one brand. That brand was tailor-made and the range was known as Stealth. And whilst there was a lot of hype surrounding that now infamous red face driver, the most impressive thing of that uh, launch from TM was in fact the range of products in Stealth. You see driver, fairway woods, hybrids, driving irons and iron sets themselves were all very impressive in their respective categories. And recently with the addition of the UDI and the DHY, it probably makes TaylorMade's strongest lineup that I've ever seen released. But this lineup also provides one huge conundrum, particularly at the top end of the bag. But I will say it's an amazing conundrum to have and the options that Stealth provides right now, right across the range has got literally every option covered right now. And in today's video, I'm gonna look at some of those options and uh, the perhaps uh, the positives, but also the negatives are some of the decisions you might make. I've got a five iron from Stealth. I've got a nine wood from Stealth. I've got a four hybrid from Stealth and I've got a four DHY all from that Stealth range. And if you have a look at the lofts, there's uh, very little to split them. But believe me, there is a huge difference in terms of how they get that ball from A to B. Get up, roll out just a little bit more. And as ever on this channel, we will be examining those options and uh, what choices you need to make to make sure that your bag setup is one that suits you. So we'll be considering a number of different things. We'll also be gathering some dry ball data and I'll show you why those four clubs are very, very different in terms of the performance and why well, one of them might suit you and uh, one of them might not. So what am I learning so far out here on the golf course? Well, the first thing is that loft goes out the window when you're choosing these clubs, because what you've got to consider is a couple of things. The bulk, the mass that's in the likes of the fairway and the hybrid, then you've also got to consider the length of shaft. So loft is only one element. So whatever you do, don't buy your clubs based on loft. So if you think you've got a 21 degree five iron, don't necessarily go out there and buy an 18 degree hybrid, for example, and expect the gap in to be perfect because I would suggest from my experience, it won't. And out here today on the golf course, first of all, it's proven exactly that. So for me, there's a big towering ball flight on the nine wood at 24 degrees. It still carries a 180, 190 at least in terms of carry distance out here. And then I see a lot lower ball flights on the hybrid, to be honest with you, even though it's still a higher ball flight than that of the five iron. And the one thing in between all that that surprises me is that DHY club. Don't forget that's a four is the number on the box, but the loft again, may be a little bit different than all the rest, but it's sort of a happy medium high and penetrating ball flight, but a compromise in terms of spin, launch, descent angle is the next thing you need to look at in terms of dry ball data, because that's the big separator of these four clubs. And ultimately a big decision, a big part of the decision that you're gonna make on which one of these type of clubs you'd put in your bag. Right, so whilst I continue to plot my way around with these four clubs at Hollywell Golf Club, I just wanna start looking at dry ball data. And the first thing to mention is this, We've got a five, we've got two fours, and we've got a nine as being the numbers on the soles of these clubs, all with, as we've already said, different lofts, different length of shafts. The interesting thing for me is the five iron is the strongest lofted out of all of these at 21 degrees. And what that tells me, first of all, is that um, if I was buying that set of irons in stealth, I'd probably stop at a six because I don't think that we as average golfers should be carrying much more than a um, perhaps a, a 24, maybe 25 degree iron in the bag, and after that, we need a little bit of help from some other clubs. But in terms of dry ball data, what did the five iron do? Well, at 21 degrees, it launched the ball quite low. The ball flight was quite low. The spin was low, as was the descent angle. And what that means is that's not an ideal combination to be stopping the ball on greens. So already we have a problem that the others might be able to solve. But the tale about ball flight and spin and descent angle continues further. And what interests me is the uh, couple of shots you're gonna see me hit now are with nine wood and with this four DHY. The nine wood is by far the highest ball flight, as I've mentioned. And if you look at dry ball data, you'll also see it's got a good combination of that ball flight, the ball speeds, the carry distance, a little bit longer than the other clubs because of the length of shaft. 
But again, that descent angle and that combination means that this is stopping on greens, but maybe not so good if you're playing in high winds. The shot I'm about to play with the DHY is a little bit taken off and a little bit more of a high flighted ball. So I found the DHY really playable club as well. And this has this, like I said, happy medium of the sort of ball flight that you can work with quite a lot. You've also got some fast ball speed, but you've got that descent angle as well. And these are all covering so far very, very similar distances. And if we look at the five iron again, and the, the, the four clubs actually that played off a previous tee, and you'll see differing ball flights from all four of them. But then you'll see where they came to rest on the fairway, and it was very, very similar indeed, nothing to split them. But again, how they got there was very, very different. The five iron absolutely ran for miles with a low, low ball flight. The others got there very much in carry distance with a little bit of roll. So again, it's very much about what you want to see from your ball flight, but maybe more importantly, what you want to see at address. So I think my final point is, in assessment and all this, is that, uh, well, Stealth is a lot more than just a red face driver. Their range from TM is incredible this year, but you've got to be really careful because numbers stamped on the bottom of clubs, lofts on the bottom of clubs, are almost irrelevant because you've got to see how they perform in your hands because as you've seen these four clubs in my hands well they get the ball from a to b quite quite different and it depends very much what you're looking for to fit those gaps in your bag and that's the thing we've learned a lot well i have at least in these last few months right last one to finish it's not going to be any of those clubs we've got 120 in and let's see if we can uh, finish with a decent iron shot Well, it's a good line. Has it got the distance? Have you got the yardage? One kick. Just a tad short, but we'll end it there. And uh, well, thank you for watching as ever. Thank you to Hollywell Golf Club for uh, allowing me to film this one. We'll be seeing plenty more of this golf course and its facilities and its new Club Pro, which will be revealed very, very soon. So comments down below, what have your thoughts on today's sort of product line and thought process? Have you tried many of these clubs or any of these clubs? And have you experienced similar things where loft is uh, not necessarily key to finding the bridge in your bag, particularly at that longer end? Right, it's been a long day. It's late in the evening. I'm ready to finish and do a well-earned pint. So I'll, uh, I think it's time for the clubhouse. See you soon.